The Magic Feeling Which Creates Instant Manifestations, by Richard Dots. Table of Contents Chapter 1, What is the Magic Feeling Which Creates Instant Manifestations? Chapter 2, How the Magic Feeling Feels Like Chapter 3, How to Feel the Magic Feeling Chapter 4, What the Magic Feeling is Not Common Manifestation Pitfalls Chapter 5, The Breezes at Dawn Have Secrets to Tell You Chapter 6, The Science Behind the Magic Feeling Chapter 7, What to Do When You Feel the Magic Feeling Chapter 8, Using the Magic Feeling for Physical Manifestations Chapter 9, Common Questions and Answers on Demonstrations Chapter 10, How to Relax Deeply to Get What You Want Chapter 1, What is the Magic Feeling Which Creates Instant Manifestations? What is the Magic Feeling Which Creates Instant Manifestations? Allow me to explain through the following amazing encounter which happened to me years ago. Many years ago while I was serving in the military, I found myself entering into a very relaxed and non-resistant state of mind. Since everything was regimental and strict in the army, I found myself surrendering to the moment and taking things one step at a time. I figured that rather than make myself miserable by counting the number of days before my ordeal was over, I would take things one step at a time, and live one moment at a time. I would immerse myself fully in the task at hand, whether it was marching from one place to another, cleaning my rifle, or in some activity that was assigned to me, no matter how mundane it was. I would stop fighting with reality or complain about it, as some of my mates were doing which only made them more depressed and irritable. I would take whatever that came willingly, and be at peace with everything. Surprisingly, my method of coping worked. Much of my misery and despair vanished as I began to immerse myself deeply into each waking moment instead of worrying about when my freedom would arrive. Back then, I had no other choice but to surrender fully to the moment in order to preserve my own sanity. Little did I know that my life was about to change. Whenever I had spare moments in the bunk, I would lie in my bed and look out through the windows at the sky outside, while feeling the sunlight soaking through every cell of my body. Since all our food and lodging was provided for and as our physical freedom was limited, I had little worldly wants. Financial worries and thoughts about how I was going to spend my time, problems which occupied my mind as a civilian in the past gradually faded away. With all my decisions made for me, my mind had little to worry about. Without realizing it, I was actually slipping into a non-resistant, light state of mind, a state of letting go. I was breaking free from my old habitual patterns of thought which had built up over many years of negative programming and conditioning. These habits were formed as a result of my previous environment, but now this new environment I was thrust into forced me to operate in an entirely different way. This was many years before I would write my first book and embark on a career as a spiritual author, so I did not have a framework through which to interpret my experiences back then. But looking back now, I was indeed putting myself into a very conducive state for manifestations and physical demonstrations to occur in one's life. Since my mind was in a neutral state of void, it began to fill itself with positive thoughts. This is similar to what many spiritual masters teach. For example, Abraham Hicks teaches that when resistance ceases, what follows is a slightly positive and attractive charge. My Theravada Buddhism meditation teachers taught that a mind accustomed to negative thoughts is akin to a vehicle in reverse gear, and it would be much more beneficial for it to first shift into neutral, a state of void, rather than to shift directly into drive, forward motion, from reverse. Lying there in my dingy bunk bed, I began giving thanks and expressing deep appreciation for everything I had. I reached a state of, peace and surrender. 
there was nothing more to ask for except to give thanks. I began feeling the presence of God or Source, even there and then in that lifeless place, more so than I felt when my physical freedom was not restricted. I said thank you in my mind over and over again, and a sense of euphoria would sweep over me as I repeated those words silently in my mind. Incidentally, a well-known quote by Meister Eckhart goes like this, if the only prayer you ever say in your whole life is thank you, that would suffice. Thinking back, I wonder if he was hinting at a deeper and more profound spiritual truth. I wasn't giving thanks for anything in particular. I just said those words and felt the feelings of immense gratitude and appreciation. A feeling that I later learned was very close to source energy. I visualized the sunlight flooding my cells, and that this light was actually God expressing itself as infinite intelligence, love, and light. Whatever name I called it wasn't important anymore. I just gave thanks and felt a rapturous sense of joy and appreciation run through my body. I closed my eyes whenever I felt like it and opened them again to look at the light around me. Goosebumps and a positive electrifying energy went through my whole body. I felt immense joy and a very intense yet gentle, loving feeling that no words can properly describe, even today. It was the magic feeling which creates instant manifestations. I was already a voracious reader back then, and would pack a few books to read during my spare time in the military base. I figured reading would at least fill my mind with positive thoughts, rather than dwell on the drab reality around me. My family would help me gather the books I was interested in, and I would pick them up when I had my weekends off to read over the next couple of weeks. One day, as I flipped open a new book which I had brought in to read, I realized it was not an ordinary book but rather a numbered, autographed copy by an author I greatly admired. This delighted me greatly as there was no indication on the book cover that it would be an autographed copy, and certainly no indication was made when the book was sold. Along with the author's signature was a serial number of the signed book. It was not a spiritual book, so there was no special significance to the book title either. When my eyes fell on those numbers along with the author's signature, a strange but strong feeling of inner knowing came over me. It was the magic feeling which creates instant manifestations. At that very moment, I knew that those were the winning numbers for the local lottery. Now some explanation is in order so that you can grasp the significance of that very moment. Up till that point in my life, I had not played the lottery. Not even once. I did not believe in gambling, given that I had a very scientific upbringing which taught me how infinitesimally small the statistical chances were. And yet there I was, staring at those numbers, feeling those rapturous goosebumps all over my body and getting that magical feeling. I had won. I knew it. These were the winning numbers. Even before I purchased a single ticket. I wish I have the words today to adequately describe how I felt back then at that very magical moment. But all I could do was to pace up and down my bunk while bursting with thanks, saying thank you over and over in my head to the universe. I had one and I knew it. There was no question and no doubt about it. If any logical person were to peer inside my head back then, it would have been absolutely absurd. There was no physical evidence, not a single shred of it. Except a very strong sense of inner knowing that came directly from Source. Source was sending me a direct message that I could not ignore. The impulse was too strong. No external confirmation was necessary. I sent a message to my mum and asked her to play those numbers for me in the local lottery. Now bear in mind that I had never played the lottery before, so getting someone else to play those numbers for me was indeed an unusual thing to do. It was totally out of character. But the impulse was so strong and right that I just could not ignore it. I acted on faith, 
which is believing in something before there is any physical evidence of its manifestation. It was to be a week before the results were announced. Each time I thought about the lottery, that magical feeling came back and all I could say was thank you, thank you, thank you. There was absolutely no question in my heart that I had won. There was not a single doubt or nagging worry about whether it was all real, or whether I was making things up. I just had a very deep sense of inner knowing. I received a message from my mum the following week, the numbers I played came out as the second prize. I had indeed won. What were the odds? I received a few thousand dollars into my life doing nothing. What struck me was how calm I felt upon hearing the news. I gave thanks and that magic feeling came flooding back to me once more. But at the same time I wasn't surprised or shocked. It was as if something I already knew inside of me all along had just been confirmed externally. There is a second happy ending to this story too. My mom, who knew it was out of character for me to play the lottery, placed her bets on those numbers too. Except they were way bigger bets than me, and she won big too that day. Guess part of my old conditioning was still restricting me from playing too big. I love this story because it beautifully illustrates all the spiritual principles I often talk about. It has all the ingredients one would need for a successful demonstration. Think about how much energy someone would have had to put in to deliberately orchestrate the whole thing, first, he would have to slip the right numbers into the book. Next, I would have to decide to purchase the right title, at the right time, and get the exact right copy shipped to, me with a serial number that would match the winning numbers. I would also have to pick the book up at exactly the right moment and see those numbers. Then I would still need the inspiration to buy those lottery tickets, at the right time. From our limited physical perspective, the logistics involved are indeed too mind-boggling and numerous for us to consider. The sheer energy and planning involved would have been so great. But when the universe is at your side, nothing is ever too big or impossible. Know this, the universe does not discern or discriminate between a big or small request. It does not judge. After all, everything is just energy flowing into and out of form, and the universe has unlimited resources at its disposal to make things happen for you if you'll do your part. But you must do your part and keep your part. As Abraham Hicks teach, it is as easy to create a castle as a button. It's just a matter of whether you focus on a castle or the button. So what's your part in this whole equation? What's the inner work you have to do? What is the magic feeling which results in instant manifestations? That's what this short book is about. In a nutshell, if you're willing to do the inner work, if you do your part, and none of it is really that dreadful physical action or hard work, the universe responds in the most miraculous and amazing ways possible. Ways that will leave you scratching your head in awe and wonderment. Did I really manifest that? This is going to be a very short read. That's because I don't want you to keep reading. I want you to go out and play with this stuff. Feel the magic feeling and that sense of eager anticipation that something is on its way to you. The magic is in the feeling, as countless spiritual teachers that walk the path have put it. And your job in a nutshell is to feel the magic feeling. As Emmett Fox wrote in The Golden Key to Prayer, the mistake made by many people, when things go wrong, is to skim through book after book, without getting anywhere. Ask yourself if you too, are falling into this trap of skimming book after book, looking for proof that that something works before you are willing to try it. Prove it to me before I'll do the inner work necessary. This is the exact attitude that keeps the good of many people from coming to them. If you understand and play with the lessons taught in this book, no more words shall be necessary. The universe works in miraculous ways, 
and has its own magical doorways to you. It has an unlimited number of ways to deliver your heart's desires to you, unless you close off these doorways with your own limited thinking and negativity. Even when I was isolated from the outside world, in a distant military base with no contact with the rest of the world, the universe still orchestrated an amazing, and easy, way to deliver my heart's desires to me. There was no effort involved. I did not need to make contact with the outside world before something happened. The universe worked within the constraints of my environment and delivered my heart's desires to me, through the path of least resistance. It always chooses the easiest and most harmonious way to deliver something to you, if you let it. Most people fall prey to preconceived limitations and negative beliefs they have unknowingly placed on themselves. They argue fervently for their limitations, explaining why they can't have so and so or why they can't have whatever they desire. I find that amusing since the universe always finds a way to you, as it did for me, if the channels of your mind are open. All limitations are man-made and self-perceived, and there are absolutely no limitations to the universe. I mean this quite literally when I say it, for the universe and the infinite intelligence that flows through all of us has the power to make things happen and create new options when previously there were none. As Bashar teaches so articulately and paraphrased in my own understanding, when you think you have no options, that is precisely when you have an unlimited number of options available to you. In other words, when you think no doors are open to you, that is when you are free to create your own limitless possibilities. Let's get started so you can learn how to tap into this magic feeling immediately. It will be fun. Chapter 2, How the Magic Feeling Feels Like The magic feeling is a byproduct of alignment with the universe, with source. This magic feeling is just as accessible to you as it is to me, and it will flow readily to anyone who seeks it. When I experienced the seemingly miraculous demonstration of money while I was in the military, I was not a particularly spiritual person. I was learning how to kill. I had not read many of the books that I went on to read, or acquired much of the knowledge and knowing that I've had since then. Yet all of it still worked for me. Universal intelligence is non-judgmental and omnipresent, always in action with no exceptions. It works for you wherever you are, whoever you are, with no physical limitations imposed by time or space. As such all limitations are self-imposed and can be dissolved. They were not even there in the first place. These act as barriers to you receiving your good. No one else out there is restricting the goodness that can flow to you except yourself. Unlimited well-being flows into your experience right now, and the magic feeling is proof of it. The magic feeling is a euphoric feeling of peace and well-being that lets you know you are on track and connected with the greater part of you. It is the feeling which quite literally, creates instant manifestations. If you get yourself into this feeling state slash place often, then whatever you want will happen very quickly for you. I'll first talk about how the magic feeling might feel like to you, before explaining how you too can live from this state of peace and love most of the time. Since I've only experienced this feeling from my own physical perspective, I can't tell you definitively how it will feel like for you. But from my experience sharing this information with others, your feelings and physical sensations will probably be very similar to mine, since we are all one and the same. Please bear in mind that I am using the closest equivalent words I can find to translate and describe my experiences, so you should not be too caught up with the words that I've chosen to use, as both of us may attach different connotations to the same word. Rather, try to perceive what is the underlying, deeper feeling I'm trying to convey through my writing, and we'll be on the same page. We are moving from the realm of the physical into the inner spiritual world here, where words may not always be adequate. Whenever I feel the magic feeling, a tremendous sense of well-being, joy and love wells up inside of me. 
Goosebumps start forming all over my arms and legs, and the feeling of warmth washes over me. I feel energized as these waves of good feelings sweep over me. These feelings come in waves for me, and sometimes they are so intense that I close my eyes just to bask in them. At times, the feeling becomes so intense that I can feel buzzing or a slight tingling sensation. While it may be intense, the magic feeling is never uncomfortable, and you'll know it is right when you feel it. Some of you reading this may instinctively know what I'm talking about. You may even have felt it before. It is as if some kind of inner connection is being made with Source that is giving you that inner confirmation, or click that everything is alright. All is well. Now here's the tricky thing about this magic feeling, you can't fake it. It wells up inside of you on its own accord. You can't pretend to be feeling it when you're not. It is also not dependent on any external circumstances or events. You have to get to that feeling yourself, although sometimes happy external events may serve as a stimulus or spark, a bridge of some sorts. The magic feeling arises spontaneously, out of its own accord and for no particular reason at all. When you feel the magic feeling, you feel good not because there is anything outside of you that is causing you to do so or giving you reason to feel good. Rather, it's because you're in alignment with your true, powerful self and you know it. The magic feeling is one of empowerment, deep trust, and inner knowing. There are a number of daily activities that may cause the magic feeling to well up spontaneously within you. For example, if you have ever read a good spiritual book and noticed that it struck a chord within you, and felt those goosebumps as you instantly recognized the truth within its pages, that's possibly very close to the magic feeling. If you have ever sat quietly by yourself and meditated until a sense of profound joy came over you, that's probably the magic feeling as well. If you have ever watched a beautiful sunset, been swept off your feet by nature, fallen in love, all of that probably brings you very close to the magic feeling as well. I use the words very close because from my personal experience, external triggers do not seem to bring me as close to a magic feeling experience that arises internally and spontaneously. The intensity does not seem to be the same. I guess another way of putting it is that the vibration does not seem as pure. This is why I recommend that you should always practice feeling the magic feeling sitting quietly, by yourself. The next chapter will show you how. Chapter 3, How to Feel the Magic Feeling The best way to get in touch with the magic feeling is through sitting quietly by yourself. As you practice and become more accustomed to the magic feeling, you'll be able to access this feeling anywhere, without the need for any particular spot or posture. For example, I can feel the magic feeling in the background as I write this. It is a deep, peaceful feeling of love and joy that just seems to well up spontaneously within me and stay in the background as I write this. It is almost a feeling of love and excitement, knowing that something good is happening. Once you have been in touch with the magic feeling, all you need to do is to notice that it's there, and it will well up spontaneously for you.